As an introduction to organizational change in the part 4, I will be discussing about forces of change. Here the learning objective mostly focuses on identification of the forces that act as stimulants to change and list the forces for resistance of change. So, what is managing change? The uh, previous discussion was about the various types of changes, the planned and unplanned change and then revolutionary and evolutionary changes. And then we discussed about the four categories that is uh, adaptation, fine tuning, frame breaking and frame bending approaches to change. So, when the organization encounters these different types of changes in different situations, so there is a disruption in the state of status quo state of affairs. So, organization is not able to be as productive as it was earlier before encountering change. So, it is very important to manage change. So, what is managing change? What are the initiatives taken by the organization to manage change will be discussed in more details here. The forces before that we must understand the basis of those forces or the forces and their nature. The forces for change may come from environmental environment external to the firm from within the organization or from individuals themselves. So, in the categorization that is internal and external forces for change, what is external change or external factors changing customers, changing consumers needs and wants, new government laws, changing technology, economic changes and internal factors are new organizational strategy change in composition of workforce or the, uh, the, the new for workforce with uh, differences with differences in age group, differences in the cultural background, differences in gender differences and multicultural workforce. So, new equipment changing employee attitude, these are internal and external forces of change. Competitive forces, organizations must make change to attempt to match or exceed the competitors on at least one of the following that is on the basis of efficiency, quality and innovation. Economic, political and global forces affect organization by forcing them to change how and when, how and where they produce goods and services, need for need to organizational, need to change organizational structure to allow expansion in foreign market, adapt in a variety of national culture, help expatriates adapt to the cultural values of where they are located. Demographic and social forces, changes in composition of the workforce and increasing diversity of employees has presented many challenges for organizations, increased need to manage diversity, ethical workforce. Uh, ethical forces, government, political, social demands for more uh, responsible corporate behavior, creation of ethics officers position, encourage employees to report unethical behavior. So, broadly we look at the forces of change as nature of workforce, greater diversity as, uh, as discussed earlier. The nature of workforce is changing, workforce is becoming more competitive, more dynamic, more diversity, more heterogeneity in the workforce in terms of visible and invisible differences. The visible differences are age, gender, race, religion and uh, say ethnicity and invisible differences changes in the value system, changes in and uh, changes in uh, attitude, value system and so on. And also we can see that diversity leads to and there is uh, as with globalization organizations are uh, having a view of in have an inclusive workforce which would be with an a with a proposition that if there is more diversity there would be more uh, say increase in innovation creativity there would be more focus on knowledge sharing so the nature of workforce is changing and uh, which has also created a disruption in the organization technology faster cheaper more mobile technologies are being used in the organization for better efficiency economic shocks mortgage meltdown competition global marketplace uh, there is a common platform on which the market uh, the glo entire global market has come up 
and the social trends baby boom retirement uh, is taken place there is a change in the workforce dynamics 70 percent of the workforce is more uh, is constituting of youngsters bo born in the say uh, in gen are they are mostly in the age group of generation x and generation gen generation z and generation y generation z those born in the year 2000 onwards and generation y the, those who are in the 85 to 99. So, these youngsters have a different value system, they have a different cognitive uh, style of working, the different approach to, uh, to various aspects in the workplace. So, which has of course, brought in some kind of changes in the business uh, and its performance. Competition, social trends, world politics, war and so on world politics has also influenced the organization. So, overall if you see external forces are globalization, workforce diversity, ethical behavior, changing technology. And uh, so, the globalization if you look at the globalization organizations must rethink the most efficient way to use resources, disseminate gather information, develop people. There is a structural change also there is structural and mental transformation. Workforce will grow in diversity, there would be more newness, new challenges, majority of workers would be female workers as there is a world over there is a call for having gender diversity in the workforce, in the gender diversity in the top management. This call is repeatedly being made to ad advocate the uh, work employers to have more women to give more employment to women, so that it will address the need of the hour, it will address the equal opportunity to the fairer or equal opportunity to women in the workplace. Work, uh, workforce, aging workforce is another challenge, less young workers as aging workforce is retiring. So, there is a scope for improving or having inclusion of the youngsters in the workplace. So, ethical behavior, ethical treatment in the workplace and uh, changing technology what we discussed is that there is a changing relationship, changes in work relationship, changes in organizational structure. So, broadly what we have discussed so far there are 6 dimensions used to measure the amount of change. One is scope that is proportion of activities department, uh, department or people affected by the change. So, uh, there are 6 dimensions as called the scope, magnitude and uh, benefit, duration, cost and technology. Let us go uh, or let us discuss each one of them in more details. Scope means proportion of activities, department or people affected by the change process. For example, how many people are affected by change? How many business processes are affected by the change process? Is it a regional or a global change? The second one talks about magnitude, difference between the current behavior and the desired behavior. Post change, for example, will employees find the new values close to the to those they currently hold or how much will be shift in the status quo with respect to time allocation, status power and other resources. Will the change make extensive retaining necessary, retraining is required or not. The benefit is positive effect brought about by change. For example, how much business value will be added after change, will organization gain competitive advantage. The other dimensions like duration means time taken to complete the change effort. For example, is the change effort expected to take 2 to 3 years, is the change temporary or permanent change. Cost is another dimension which measures cost contains both human and economic aspect. For example, how many people are working for the process of change? How much money will be spent in the entire process of change? Technology is the last dimension which means influence of change relevant to technology. For example, will the new information system work well and be adaptable to the current one? 
if files or data transfer is needed if the transfer secure and safe. So, with this I what we discussed is overall we have discussed about the various forces of change. These forces are the forces which uh, are internal and external to organizations. We have discussed about uh, the changes in consumers needs and wants, new government laws, changing technology, economic changes, internal changes, internal factors are organizational strategy, changes in the composition of workforce. We discussed about increasing concept of workforce diversity with uh, gender diversity, disability inclusion and people with uh, different age groups or multicultural, multi generational workforce or people of different generations or different generational cohorts and new equipment changing employee attitude. So, when there is a change which occurs due to different forces there is a requirement for developing the developing or internal capacity to manage these forces manage the disruptions which have happened in the organization. So, managing cho change is very important in order to be more competitive and to be more uh, aggressively competitive and uh, to manage its organization's performance. So, what we have discussed so far we have uh, analyzed the various forces of change as internal and external factors of change. In internal factors we discussed about new organizational strategy, the change in composition of workforce, new equipment, changing employee attitude and external forces changing consumers needs and wants, new government laws, changing technology, economic changes. So, after discussing the internal and external for forces of change and uh, knowing about the uh, factors of change uh, on disruptions caused to the organization and their performance. So, there is a need to understand how to manage uh, the changes in the organization and then next we will move towards this discussing about the resistance to change which is an important uh, component managing resistance to change. So, we will discuss uh, about why people resist change and how resistance might be managed, levels of resistance to change and uh, list the forces for resistance to change, reasons for resistance to change and how to manage resistance effectively. So, the first let us know about what is resistance to change. One of the main reasons for some organizations inability to change is organizational inertia that maintains the status quo. Resistance lowers an organization's effectiveness and reduces its chances of survival. So, why people resist let us it, it is very important to understand why there is a resistance the ambiguity and uncertainty that change introduces, resistance of the ambiguous nature of change or the comfort of old habits as generally said old habit dies hard. So, people differently people do not shun their old habits, a concern over personal loss of status, money, authority, friendship and personal inconvenience is also sometimes one of the factors why people resist, why people do not budge to change themselves. The perception that change is incompatible with the goal and interest of the organization. Resistance also occurs because of organizational level resistance to change uh, and the some organizational level factors like power and conflict. When change causes power struggle and conflict there is resistance differences in functional orientation, mechanistic structure and organizational culture. So, there is uh, also uh, differences or organizational level factors which can cause resistance. Similarly, there are some group level factors, group norms, group cohesiveness, group think, escalation of commitment, individual level factors which may also lead to resistance like uncertainty, insecurity, selective perception and retention and habit. So, forces for resistance to change like uh, the competitive forces, economic forces, political forces, global forces, demographic forces, social forces and ethical factors or ethical forces and its impact on resistance to change. 
organizational level factors are structure, culture, strategy. Functional level the differences in structural orientation, subunit orientation, power and conflict and uh, group level the factors are norms, cohesiveness, group think. Individual level factors are cognitive biases, uncertainty and insecurity, selective perception and retention and habit. So, what are these forces? Forces of change will have a direct cost, saving face uh, and uh, fear of the unknown factors and breaking routines, incongruent systems, incongruent team dynamics. Fear of unknown, fear of loss, fear of failure, disruptions of interpersonal relationship, personality conflicts, politics, organizational, cultural assumptions. After that resistance, well let us discuss one of the cases where resisting change at FBI. The FBI has been slow to shift from law enforcement to domestic intelligence due to incongruent system, career path, reward system, decentralized structure, breaking routines unfamiliar with intelligence gathering roles, saving face past turf wars with CIA created an anti-investigation mindset. So, we have seen that there are several factors which have led to the changes in various government organizations, changes in the changes in uh, various business organizations. I will give you one of one of the uh, examples of Indian post. Indian postal service was completely has completely changed. Nowadays, there is more focus on digitization and uh, there is a complete transformation and a facelift has been given. As a catch up response to the various uh, private courier services which have been giving, which have uh, kicked up this particular space of the courier services. So, as a catch up response, the, there is a facelift and uh, when initially the change was brought, there was a lot of resistance, but slowly people started to learn. So, we will discuss how resistance to change appears to be a natural and positive state. Forms of resistance to change overt and immediate, people voice complaints, engage in job actions, implicit and deferred loss of employee loyalty and motivation, increased error or mistakes, increased absenteeism, deferred resistance clouds the link between source and reaction main reasons for some organizations inability to change is the inertia that maintains the status quo. Resistance to change lowers an organization's effectiveness and reduces its chance of survival. Organizational level resistance uh, stems from power and conflict when change causes power struggles and conflicts when there is resistance, difference in functional orientation and uh, mechanistic uh, organizations, refreezing the desired conditions realigning organizational systems and team dynamics with the desired changes, alter rewards to reinforce new behavior, feedback system help employees learn how they were doing provide support to the new behavior pattern. There are a number of ways why people resist change which should be addressed by management. Below is a list of these reasons at individual level, at organization or group level. As uh, discussed earlier in this section, fear of unknown, self interest, selective attention and retention, habit, dependence, need for security are some of the individual level factors. And uh, organizational or group level factors are threats to power and influence, lack of trust, different uh, perception and goals social disruptions, resource limitations, fixed investments. The sources of resistance to change, selective information processing, individual resistance, fear of unknown factor, economic factors, habit, security, organizational or uh, organizational resistance, threat to established resource uh, allocations, structural inertia, limited focus of change, group inertia, threat to uh, expertise and a threat to uh, established power relationships, creating an urgency for change, inform employees about driving forces most difficult when organization is doing well, 
must be real not contrived, customer driven change adverse consequences for firm, human element energizes employees. So, minimizing resistance to change, how these what are the strategies to minimize resistance, education and communication, communicate with employees to help them see the logic of change, educate employees through one to one discussion, memos, group meetings or reports. So, there should be a continuous exchange of information, so that there is more openness and people discuss at length about why there is a need for change. Appropriate if, if source of resistance is either poor communication or misinformation and uh, must be mutual, must be mutual trust and credibility between managers and employees. Then participation allow those employees, those who oppose change to participate in the decision. So, there will be call them or ask them to participate in the discussion, so that they will start realizing with discussion, with deliberations and with an active involvement, they will start understanding why there is a need for change and they will also give some suggestions for improvement, which will be a kind of uh, the first hand experience with the change process. So, assume that they have expertise to make meaningful contribution and give them a scope, so that they can meaningfully contribute and later on recognize their contribution. Involvement can reduce resistance, obtain commitment to seeing change succeed and inequality and increase quality of change decisions. Facilitation and support, provide supportive efforts such that as such as employee counseling or therapy, new skills training or short paid leave of absence can be time consuming and expensive. Then manipulation and cooptation, manipulation is covert and uh, attempt to influence such as twisting or distorting facts, withholding damaging information or creating false rumors. So, manipulation and cooptation, I would cite one example, when VRS voluntary retirement scheme was first launched. So, people uh, the management uh, representatives did not name it as voluntary retirement, because the term retirement would be demotivating. So, they termed it renamed it as a golden handshake offer to the employees of a certain age group. So, the renaming, re-christianing or the manipulated way the information was placed before the employees have really changed the scenario and management got a win-win. Management had launched the offer of VRS successfully with a win-win approach. So, cooptation is a form of manipulation and participation, inexpensive and easy way to gain support of resistors can fail miserably if targets feel they have been tricked. So, it is also to be taken care of that the targets do not do not feel being cheated or being tricked. Selecting people who will accept a change. So, ability to easily accept and adapt to change is related to personality and uh, select people who are open to experience. So, it is always good to identify people who can embrace change, who can accept, who can be having a positive attitude towards change and are willing to take risk and are flexible in their behavior. Coercion or by force, using direct threat or force, inexpensive and easy way to get support may be illegal, but even legal coercion can be perceived as bullying. And then minimizing resistance at Nissan. Carlos Gosen launched a turnaround at Nissan Motors company that saved the Japanese automaker and relied on change management practices rarely seen in Japan. Employee involvement was a key strategy to minimize resistance or otherwise what discussed we uh, in the previous section employee participation give them an ample scope to participate, voice their concern to uh, so that there will be minimum resistance to the turbulent changes that occur. 
minimizing resistance to change through communication. How this happens? Highest priority and first strategy for change improves urgency to change, reduces uncertainty and problems time consuming and costly. Learning provides new knowledge and skills, includes coaching and action learning, helps break old routines and adopt new roles. The problems are potentially time consuming and costly. Employee involvement increases ownership of change, helps saving face and uh, reducing fear of unknown, includes task forces, future search events, problems, time consuming, potential conflict. Stress management when communication, training and involvement do not resolve stress. Potential benefits is more motivation to change, less fear of unknown, fewer direct cost, problems are time consuming, expensive, does not help everyone. Then next is uh, negotiation, when people clearly lose something and will not uh, otherwise support change, influence by exchange, reduce direct cost, problems are expensive, gains compliance not committed and uh, the coercion or by force, when all else fail, assertive influence, firing people, radical form of unlearning, problems reduce trust may create more subtle resistance. So, how do we finally manage change? Managing resistance to change through communication, details, rational participation in the process that is through ownership and commitment, empathy and support. With this, uh, I would like to conclude the session here. What we discussed so far? We have discussed about the various forces of change and uh, that is the internal external factors of change and then finally, we discussed about why there is resistance for change and how resistance can be managed by adopting various strategies of communication, learning, employee involvement, stress management, negotiation and coercion. With this I conclude this uh, lecture here, thank you.